Welcome to Youth League Baseball on RTC TV. Tonight's matchup is against the visiting Fulton Cubs against the home team Rochester Cubs. I have a feeling tonight the Cubs are probably going to be winning this game. Yeah, I was going to say pretty interesting matchup here between two of the same team. Also wearing similar colors. Exactly. Same color pants, same color shirt. So listen well, folks, because it might be get a little confusing at times. And we, may, we will apologize in advance for any uh, confusion. Absolutely. So up to bat for the Fulton Cubs is number two, Sam, as he watches the first pitch go by. On the mound for the Rochester Cubs is William Urbach, number nine. And two balls for the batter. And there's nobody running the scoreboard up here as of right now, so keep that in mind as you guys see the scoreboard on some plays that it may not be accurate at this point. We'll have to pay close attention ourselves and do three jobs at one time. I think we can do it. <laughs> Count is 3-0 and oh for those of you that can see the scoreboard. First batter, Sam, for the Fulton Cubs, doing a good job being patient. Might draw a walk, and he does on that fourth pitch for a ball. So Fulton Cubs already have one runner on first base, and that brings up number four for the Fulton Cubs, Gavin, up to bat. Good job by the Fulton Cubs there. That's exactly what your leadoff runner is for, getting on base. Absolutely. Test out the pitcher, see the speeds, get good looks at pitches, and warm up the pitcher for your the rest of your lineup. Mm -hmm. And Gavin squares to bunt, ends up being a fake bunt, and steal to second base. Fulton Cubs already have a runner on second base. And high pitch, Rochester Cubs pitcher struggling to find the zone. Quite a few balls in just the first two batters, but I'm sure you'll find it. Once you find it, you're good to go. And good swing, but a foul ball by number four, Bar excuse me, Gavin for the Fulton Cubs. That's a good job by the pitcher there, He's keeping his composure, able to still throw strikes. Yes. Knowing that he's got a runner in scoring position. Runner in scoring position, just the second batter for the Rochester Cubs. Good snag by the catcher there, saving a runner from going to third base. Those are a lot of plays that people don't recognize how important those play kind of plays are when it comes down to a two-point game maybe. Exactly. A lot of times they make the catch and you don't think about what would have happened unless they didn't make the catch. So sometimes it's hard to give credit when so many good plays are being made. Yeah. So two strikes on the batter. Gavin having a good battle between the pitcher and the batter. So he can get an RBI, runner on second base. And foul ball. Called it a fair ball, landed right in front of the plate, but he did move the runner to third base, so he's got one out. They may have to decide if it was a foul ball or a fair ball. Looks like they'll talk about it here. And, yep, they decided on a foul ball. From up here, it looked like it bounced off his foot. Sometimes that's hard for the umpire, be umpire behind the plate to really tell if it's a dead ball or not. That's why he had to ask the field umpire, so they called it a dead ball. Count is back to full count still with Gavin up to bat. And strike three out number one for the inning. Sometimes that's tough. You think you are on base, have a runner on third base, and a foul ball call can completely change your at bat. Yep, and that's a good job again by Rochester Cubs pitcher here. And this brings up number three, Caden to the plate for the Fulton Cubs. And looks like William Urbach is finding the zone pretty well. Had a struggle in his first batter, but just had a strike out and starts off his next batter with a strike. And strike two, not messing around the Rochester pitcher here. And on second base is still Sam for the Fulton Cubs. And strike three for the second out of the inning. Like I said, once you warm up and find the zone, 
Fulton Cubs may be in trouble as William Urbach doing a good job on his last few batters pitching here. This brings cleanup batter to the plate, number nine, Adam. Very impressed with this Rochester pitcher here. After having your leadoff on second, and we've got a hit to center. Just bounces off the center fielder's glove, but might get him at second base. And he does bring in an RBI and stands up for a double at second base. So good hit by Adam. Gets an RBI. You'd hate to see the batter stranded at second base after starting off the inning at second base. So great job by Adam to get his RBI for the game. This brings up number 23 for the Fulton Cubs crew. And good foul ball there. Knowing the Rochester pitcher is throwing a lot of strikes here, the batters are aggressive early in the count and good adjustment with the past few batters. Right, and it's uh, important to be aggressive on that first pitch, especially when the pitcher is throwing a lot of strikes. Absolutely. Sometimes that's the best pitch you're going to get is the first pitch. Yep. And Crew has worked himself to an 0-2 count. Urbach, the Rochester pitcher, doing a good job staying aggressive, and Crew needs to battle if he wants to score another RBI. It's on second base. And drop third strike. He's going to run to first base. Catcher struggles to find it, and Crew ends up on first base, drop third strike, which you don't see very often, but it does happen. I think it's a little different in baseball. The ball is pretty light color compared to the sand and dirt around, unlike the sport I play with a yellow softball. So I have seen that quite a few times. Yeah. So crew is on first base. Adam is on third base. And this brings number eight for the Fulton Cubs, EJ, up to bat. That's another um, thing to point out for the catcher's responsibilities. On those drop third strikes, it can be frustrating for them, but for them to recover and uh, having that job to make that play can be very important. Absolutely. And number eight, EJ up to bat for the Fulton Cubs. So now two runners in scoring position for the Fulton Cubs. They have one on the board currently, two outs. And high pitch comes right back to the catcher. We talked about this last time we were commentating a game, how fast the ball bounces off of the fence here. And sometimes if it bounces at the right angle, then the catcher has the upper hand if yep. a runner's stealing. I've seen a lot of backstops though at different stadiums where Man, you do not want to pass ball. Absolutely. It, it puts that much more pressure on the catcher to be a wall behind the plate. Yeah. So now the Fulton Cubs have the bases loaded, bringing up number seven, Jaden, up to bat. And still in the top of the first inning here. This pitcher is throwing quite a bit of strikes here. And good <coughs> swing, but just missed. Sometimes I think as a batter when the bases are loaded and you've got two outs and you know there's a lot of pressure on you, you take a really big swing and really aggressive to try and get a couple runs in here. Good swing for strike two. Also good job by Rochester Cubs pitcher William Urbach getting ahead knowing that he's got the bases loaded. You never want to never want to walk in a run in this situation. You can see him uh, following that pitch, heading towards home on every pitch, which is very smart because you don't know when that when a ball might go past the catcher and allow them to go for another steal and Abs another run. Absolutely, and as much responsibility as it is on the catcher, as the pitcher, you've got to be the one to back up and make the tag at home if, if such a play happens. So ball high, I think the count is even at two with two outs here in the top of the first inning. Bases juiced, but only one run scored so far by the Fulton Cubs, Rochester Cubs in the field. Yeah. 
And strike three to end the inning. Good battle by both Cub teams here. The Rochester Cubs will head to the dugout to grab their bats and try and score some runs while the Fulton Cubs will be on defense. So the score is one to zero after the top of the first inning. We'll be back. Welcome back to Youth League Baseball on RTC TV. This is the bottom of the first inning. Fulton Cubs against Rochester Cubs. Rochester Cubs up to bat currently. Fulton Cubs in the field. Up to bat for the Rochester Club Cubs is number three, Lennon Craigbaum. The Fulton Cubs have one run on the board, and their pitcher is number nine, Adam. So we saw a pretty long first half of the inning. They scored one run right off the bat. They had a good hit by their pitcher, Adam, to get themselves an RBI, and then they had the bases loaded at the end of the inning, and pitcher did a really good job for Rochester and struck out the last batter. So should be a good game so far tonight. Yep, we'll see how, how well Rochester can respond to that run being scored in the top. Yep, absolutely. See if they can get it tied. That's a big thing. If you can score one run an inning, you should be pretty good. So, Adam, the pitcher for the Fulton Cubs, walked the first batter, Craig Baum, and this brings up number seven, Jake Freeman, up to bat for the Rochester Cubs. Duck out of the way by Jake Freeman. Still a runner on first for Rochester Cubs here. With no outs, is that right? No outs, yep. And pass ball will send Craig Baum to second base. So pretty similar situation that we saw in the top of the first inning by the Fulton Cubs had a walk and had a steal to put an RBI on second base with only the second batter up to bat. So as a team, that's a good feeling to know you've still got your three, four, five middle of your lineups up to bat with runners on base. So yeah, absolutely. this is Jake Freeman up to bat for the Rochester Cubs looking to get an RBI or at least advance his teammate who is currently on second base with zero outs. And Fulton Cubs catcher there made a good stop to prevent uh, a Rochester runner from advancing to third. And that's the second walk of the inning, bringing up number three batter, the pitcher for the Rochester Cubs, number nine, William Urbach. And we're going to have a short timeout as the Fulton Cubs coach heads out to the mound to talk to the pitcher, probably ask him what's going on, can you find the strike zone since he's had two straight walks in a row. I remember those days. It's, it's not fun coming out and throwing balls when you don't expect it, you know. Right. So you can prepare as much as you want, but sometimes it's just difficult to throw strikes. Every now and then you just don't have it. But like we saw with the Rochester pitcher, he had a couple walks the first inning. But once he found the strike zone, he had all three outs that inning for Rochester, who was on defense, was actually strikeout. So just as quickly as you feel like it's going bad, it can be turned around. So we'll see what... Adam, number nine for the Fulton <coughs> Cubs, can do here after a little pep talk from his coach. We've got number three batter, William Urbach, for the Rochester Cubs up to bat. And good pep talk as he throws his first pitch strike. Way to come back strong for number nine, Adam. That's exactly what you want to see if you're a coach for that pitcher. Absolutely. And two strikes. Man, I might need a pep talk from that coach every yeah, time. And it yeah. worked pretty well. <laughs> Most have. You have to feel good as a coach, too. Like, oh, hey, yeah, whatever, I call it a good time out right there. <laughs> whatever I said worked, because if it doesn't work, then what do you do next? And rocket shot to third base if he can pick it up and step on third. That's a force out. There was a little tumble at third base, but no tag was needed. So good job by the Rochester, excuse me, by the Fulton Cubs third baseman, I'll try not to get too confused tonight, <laughs> to get that force out at third base. So now, 
the had they have one out in the bottom of the first inning. And this brings number five, Aaron Kennedy, to the plate. He does have one runner in scoring position, and a long hit ball for a triple could definitely get an RBI from his teammate on first base here. But just like we saw in the top of the first inning, Adam, the pitcher for the Fulton Cubs, found the strike zone, and he's been on fire ever since. So I think the Rochester Cubs need to be a little more aggressive in their next at-bats. And tries for a sack bunt, but inside pitch was just punched foul. But good coaching move, I think, to get those runners from first and second over to second and third to let your number five batter come in and try and get two RBIs on the next at bat. Oh, yeah, anything on the ground, as soon as they see him squaring up, they, they should be sprinting to the next base. Absolutely. There's a force out of any bag, and that allows the Fulton Cubs to make a play. Even a double play, potentially. Is there two outs or just? Just one out. Just one out. One so there's a potential a double play here for Fulton Cubs. Which that, the double play, just think about that. Such a momentum changer. I mean, for oh, yeah. both teams, it's when you're the one on defense, it's one of the best things that can happen in this sport just because two outs in one play is a huge help no matter where you are in the game. Absolutely. So number five, Aaron Kennedy up to bat. Looking to score some runs here. Excuse me, this is number 10, Gabe Kerr. We had a batting change and I was not paying attention. So number 10, Gabe Kerr for the Rochester Cubs is up to bat. Aaron Kennedy is on first base. And it looks like he's gonna walk. So bases now loaded again here for Rochester Cubs. Bases are loaded with number four, Calvin Corbell up to bat. fly ball to left field just bounces out of the left fielder's glove but it will score a run for the Rochester Cubs and the score is now tied at one good shot there by that Rochester batter and that was Calvin Corbell now bringing up to the plate Peyton McTaggart number 11 Pitch just a little high. Good eye by McTaggart there, not getting too aggressive, but knowing that the bases are loaded for the Rochester Cubs, and one good hit here could get them quite a few runs. Mm -hmm. Oh, he gets hit by a dead ball there. Hit by a pitch right in the back. And coach is helping him up, have him shake it off. It doesn't always feel good right away, but... You do get to go to first base and you got to run. So I think they're bringing him back to the dugout. Maybe they'll have a courtesy runner since he got hit in the back. Looks like he's in a little bit of pain, but now the score is two <coughs> to zero. Rochester Cubs are up by one. What can we call that? Is that like a, it's not an RBI, but. <laughs> it, it's not a run batted in. Um, and it's not a run hit in as far as a hit to the outfield. We'll just but call you that were taking it for the team right Yes, there. I do like that. <laughs> but technically, it is a run hit in, but it wasn't hit by the bat. It was hit by the person. Does that right. make sense? Yeah. what I'm saying? I don't know how, what we call that. I don't know. I'm sure there's some crazy rule in the rule book. This has <laughs> had to come up once or twice in the many years. But and that's probably not a statistic you want to stack up throughout true, your season. True, that's <laughs> true. But if the game is on the line and I have to put my back out there, I guess I could do that if, yeah. it, if it gets yeah. me another run. So the tough guy is coming back out. He must have got a little dust on his shirt, but shaking off the pitch that hit him in the back, and he's going to take his place at first base. That's always nice. He can shake it off because you don't want to waste a substitute that you could use later in the game if, if you can tough it out and head to first base. So that's Peyton McTaggart who got a run, hit by pitch, 
RBI that we are <laughs> we're gonna call it taking it for the team and up to bat should be number two Bryce Calvert bases still loaded for the Rochester Cubs now ahead by one run in the bottom of the first inning And another inside pitch, Fulton Cubs pitcher. I know sometimes there's one side of the plate that a pitcher will seem to lean on, and it seems like the Fulton Cubs pitcher likes the inside of the plate a little bit more. Which works pretty well against a lot of hitters at this age, you know. Yep. When they see that ball coming anywhere close to them, it might make them back off or become more timid at the plate and not go after what they would normally go after. A lot of times pitchers can get the batter's jammed if they don't pull their hands through correctly on an inside pitch. Mm -hmm. Ends up being an easy grounder for your infield. So that is a another run for the Rochester Cubs as they walked in the third run of the game. So taking the lead pretty quickly here, bringing up number eight, the last batter rounding out their lineup, Austin Rogers. The leadoff batter for Rochester is already on deck. And pretty good pitch, just a little bit too high. Rochester Cubs being very selective right now, and I don't blame them. Seeing a couple walks and a couple hit by pitches, you want to make sure that you don't help the pitcher out and swing at a ball. With that said, a pass ball up behind the play, and he just got under it. As the play was coming out, I wondered if the Fulton Cubs would be able to tag him out at home, but good slide by the Rochester Cubs player. And now that is four runs to one. Rochester still up to bat and in the lead <laughs> in the bottom of the first inning. Great job here by Rochester responding to that first run by Fulton. Absolutely. And good swing by Rogers. Base is not loaded, although he still has runners in scoring position. So a one good hack on this two and two count could definitely give them a bigger lead. And that's ball four on Rogers to load up the bases once again for the Rochester Cubs. And the good thing about if you're on defense, you know, a lot of times people think, oh, wow, the bases are loaded. That puts pressure on them. But all it takes is a hard shot to one of the infielders, and they've got any base that they can touch to get it out and get out of this inning. Yep, it can actually benefit you in a way. Absolutely. But on the side of the offense, knowing that you've got multiple runners on base that you can score, makes you feel a little bit better on offense as well. But I've definitely seen it both ways where you have bases loaded and you hit yourself into a double play, and that's no fun if you're on offense. Absolutely not. So this is leadoff batter for the Rochester Cubs, number three, Craig Baum. And you got to be happy with this as a coach as well, seeing your leadoff hitter coming up to the plate with bases loaded. Absolutely, knowing that the – Top part of your lineup is coming up to bat. has got to be a good feeling for the Rochester Cubs coach. And just missed that pitch. It flew right over our heads, but I wondered if it was going to connect to the outfield. He had a good swing on a good pitch. Yep. But now battling with two strikes as Craig Baum <coughs> has bases loaded his second time up to bat for the inning. And pop fly right in front of the second baseman will score one run. And the tag was not in time, so the second run will score. That was a very, very good attempt by the Fulton Cubs to tag the runner at second base. Unfortunately, he had already made it there, so that puts two more runs on the board for the Rochester Cubs. 
They are now up 6-1, to one, bringing up Jake Freeman to the plate. And you'll see um, some of these hitters do better on their second time around at bat because we're still in the same inning here and this pitcher's probably getting pretty wore out. He may be throwing with a little bit less velocity. And you've also seen the pitcher once. You kind of know some yep. movement, some of his tactic. But I, like you said, maybe getting a little bit tired. I have seen him hold his shoulder just a little bit after throwing quite a few pitches in this first inning. Mm -hmm. So Jake Freeman at the plate, number seven. Two teammates in scoring position here in the bottom of the first inning. And good swing, but a foul tip, and good job by the Fulton Cubs catcher to hang in there and keep that ball. Sam is the Fulton Cubs catcher, and number nine, Adam, is the pitcher. And good pop fly to first base. Great diving play. Just that. popped out of his glove. That's a tough play as a first baseman coming around that angle. Oh, yeah. And as a lefty as well. Yes, I agree. Did you see that? Adam gave the batter a high five as they walked by. So <laughs> That's what we like to see. I love here. that. I love when sportsmanship, good sportsmanship is good. Sometimes it's hard when games are on the line, but it's always important. And that is strike three. Great job by Adam to get that out and get out of a big inning there. Rochester Cubs will head to the field. Fulton Cubs will grab their bats as we head to the top of the second. Welcome back to Youth League Baseball. This is the top of the second inning. We are about to throw the first pitch, but we had a ball <laughs> scramble onto the field. But this is number four, Gavin, up to the plate for the Fulton Cubs. Big swing and a strike, but I like the aggressiveness. Big inning last inning at the bottom of the first for the Rochester Cubs as they scored six runs. Fulton Cubs now down by five runs as they only have one on the board. So we'll see what Gavin can do here as he starts the second inning for his team. It's an important inning to see how the Fulton Cubs respond to what the Rochester Cubs did in the bottom of the first there. Yes, as we know about sports, everything is about momentum. And if the Fulton Cubs let up here and they don't keep pushing and get a couple runs, the Rochester Cubs aren't going to feel as threatened. And that is going to play throughout the rest of the game. You know, there's a whole bunch of sports psychology that goes into this and, and how you retaliate and if you come back with runs and how it affects the other team. So, like you said, very exciting ending here for the Fulton Cubs as they are almost to the top of their lineup and looking to score a few runs as they're down by five. So we have got a full count here with number four, Gavin, up to bat, looking to get on base to help his team. Yeah, and that also brings into the conversation run rules. I, I believe in this league it is 10 runs after four innings. I think so, too. But with that said, that was a strikeout for out number one. Great job by William Urbach, the Rochester Cubs pitcher, as he gets the first out of his inning. And this brings up numberless Jameen up to bat. It looks like there was a... Maybe lack of shirt and or somebody forgot their shirt. But either way, he's the player in the odd-shaped shirt, or excuse me, odd-colored shirt. And he's up to bat, rounding out the Fulton Cubs lineup. So as we said earlier, this is the major leagues, and there's some different rules. They do play to six innings. They have an hour and 45 minute time limit. You cannot start the final inning if the hour 45 time limit has come up. And like you said before, there is a 10 run rule after the fourth inning. So this is Jameen up to bat for the Fulton Cubs as he draws a walk and heads to first base. So number two, the leadoff batter for the Fulton Cubs, Sam, is up to bat. And 
That's a good job by Jameen getting on base in the nine position on his team. Put, setting up his team in a good position for an RBI going into the top of the lineup for Absolutely. the Fulton Cubs. Absolutely. So Rochester Cubs in the field, Fulton Cubs up to bat. This is the top of the second inning. The score is incorrect on the scoreboard, but six to one, Rochester Cubs in the lead. And good second strike pitch by William Urbach, the Rochester Cubs pitcher. Count is one and two. Sam battling from behind this at bat. And great line shot just passes the umpire and gets past the center fielder. So this will probably score Jameen from first base if they keep flagging him on. But a good throw from center field and a better hit by Sam for the Fulton Cubs to bring an RBI all the way from first base to touch home plate. Excellent job there by Fulton. And that's exactly what <clears throat> I mentioned earlier. How, how are the Fulton Cubs going to respond to that big inning by Rochester? And that's what they need. Absolutely. So now up to bat is number 14, Brock. And Sam wanting to score on that pass ball, but there are times where you can be too aggressive. And when you're that close to home plate, you never want to run yourself out of a run because you're too aggressive. So the Fulton Cubs coach and Brock are going to have a chit-chat about their at-bat. There maybe have been a missed signal or maybe a plan that they don't have a signal for that they need to discuss before this next pitch is thrown. So Brock up to bat his second time for this game. Has a big RBI on third base with only one out as he hits a rocket in the same place as the previous batter. He gets himself an RBI, tries for second base. The throw is off and he's safely at second base. It's just great hit but crazy to know that if it would have been a perfect throw to second base, he probably would have been out. But yep. great job on being aggressive by Brock to get a hit and an RBI, and just like that, the Fulton Cubs have cut the Rochester Cubs lead in half. So now this brings number three, Caden, to the plate. And William Urbach, the Rochester Cubs pitcher, throws pretty hard. So when the Fulton Cubs make a connection, they've had two line shots to the outfield on the right side that have enabled them to score two runs. You know, that's, that's always my favorite thing about hitting on pitchers that throw hard you know if you, you make contact with that thing it's going to come off the bat hard well and nowadays bats are so expensive you might as well let the bat do its work and right. hit it on the sweet spot and sometimes that's better than taking a big swing yep so number three Caden up to bat for Fulton Cubs he probably would love to change positions with his teammate on second base as his previous teammate did and score another run Two RBIs here, but Caden draws a walk, bringing up the pitcher and the batter who scored the run in the previous inning, Adam, number nine, up to bat for the Fulton Cubs. Adam had probably one of the best hits we've seen tonight, a long ball to center field that brought in his teammate from second base. And he has another cracked hit down the third baseline past the left fielder. That will bring in one run and definitely two runs as he ends up his second triple of the night wow. so not only is he the fulton cubs pitcher he has had three wow. rbis and two triples so so far he is doing very well an offensive workhorse there for the fulton cubs you're exactly right and i don't know if my math is correct but the fulton cubs are only down by one run so this brings number 23 crew up to bat. All crew has to do is hit the ball on the ground and he will have an RBI and before we know it, the score will be tied. And just a bit foul, but a ball like that to the right side 
is definitely your game plan when you've got a runner on third base because you know if you hit one to the right side, making a throw and a tag is not probable, especially at this level. So Crew just needing to get a bat on the ball here to tie up the game. And he does so right back to the pitcher. He does get a sacrifice out, but like I said, now he scores number nine, Adam, and the game is tied. We may not make it to the fourth inning at really? all if uh, <laughs> all these innings keep happening this this exciting. And so that, those Fulton coaches, they got to be happy with what their kids are doing right now, though. I, I don't think you see it a lot at this age where kids bounce back and respond positively when getting down by so much, but they have just done exactly what they should do. Five runs in the games of baseball and softball can be quite a bit at times, and also, we just witnessed one, two, three hits, a couple walks, and if you can lace that all together, then you can tie up the game pretty quickly. So before it gets too far into the at-bat, this is number eight, EJ, up to bat for the Fulton Cubs, looking to extend the lead. Rochester Cubs on defense do have two outs for this inning, so there is some light at the end of the tunnel as they do not have bases loaded. There actually is no one on base right now, so they could easily get out of this jam, but I think a little disappointed as the score is tied so quickly. So this will bring EJ to first base for his walk and bring number seven, Jaden, to the plate for the Fulton Cubs. It goes to show how fast games can flip around in, in favor of <clears throat> one team or another. A lot of people don't love to watch Major League Baseball or baseball in general because sometimes the sport can be very slow, but yeah. we just witnessed a couple pretty exciting plays and pretty fast switching of momentum there. So that's always fun to see both teams doing well and having a momentum swing. So once again, Jaden up to bat with two outs. He's got a teammate on first base and his score is tied six to six. One of the things, too, that's a difference here at the Youth League Baseball, the major league games have two umpires, one behind the plate and one out in the field. And every once in a while, if there is an umpire shortage, the minor league games will just have one umpire who stations himself behind the pitcher's mound. And that enables him to call balls and strikes as well as calls in the field. So he has the best position for both calls. Yeah. <coughs> Got to work with what you got sometimes. Absolutely. And good swing at a good pitch by Jaden, but swing and a miss, and the count is two and one. So we were able to verify as somebody changed the scoreboard that our our score here is correct and it is a tie ball game at six to six here in the top of the second. It is top of the second and it has already been 45 minutes into the game. So <laughs> two innings, actually an inning and a half have taken quite a bit of time because of all the runs scored. A lot of times you don't even have a full game with six runs scored by each team. So this should be very exciting to see how the rest of it plays out. So number seven, Jaden up to bat still for the Fulton Cubs. He's worked it to a full count. And swing and a miss for strike three as the Rochester <coughs> Cubs get out of that long inning. The Fulton Cubs will be on defense as we head to the bottom of the second inning, tied six to six. And we're back with Youth League Baseball on RTC TV. This is only the bottom of the second inning. We've been about an hour of play, but lots of runs scored here as the game is tied 6-6. Six to six. We have number nine, William Urbach, for the Rochester Cubs, up to bat. So like we've said, six runs on both sides. That's 12 runs for the game, and it's only been two innings. So... Actually, it's only been an inning and a half, so we will see here what the Rochester Cubs can do, and if they will, will respond to the big comeback by the Fulton Cubs. Yep, two big innings for both of these teams, so we'll see what Rochester can do here in the bottom of the second. As the Fulton pitcher throws that all the way behind the Rochester hitter. 
It happens sometimes. It, it happens. <laughs> it only looks funny when the batter's on that side. Now, if it would have been a left-handed batter, you just would have thought it was an outside pitch. But yeah. I remember those days where I hope no one saw that. <laughs> And that's ball four for Urbach as he heads to first base. He tries to round. I was thinking he was going to take that second base. That was a good call by the first base coach, but also smart base running. Good job listening to his coach. Absolutely. This brings number five and cleanup hitter Aaron Kennedy to the plate for the Rochester Cubs. And high pitch, good job to let that go. There are times where sometimes those high pitches look real juicy to just smash mm -hmm. over the outfield, <laughs> but good discipline tells you to lay off those. And on the pass ball, Urbach will head to second base pretty easily. And he looks to run to third, but I think the coach is going to hold him off there. Keep him at second base rather Rather be safe at second than on the bench. That's can't score from the bench. Good base running though by Rochester there. And Kennedy at the plate now with a teammate in scoring position here. Could extend the lead as the game is now tied six to six. And Kennedy is cleanup hitter for Rochester, is that correct? Yes, so Fulton Cubs probably feeling a little bit of pressure knowing mm -hmm. a really good batter is up to bat. Quick and dodge there. Good dodge, but ends up being ball four. That's smart. I've always thought about that. Why would you waste <laughs> and, and take some pain on a pitch that's already going to send you to first base? Yep. So it's good. Some, some coaches have the theory of, you know, take the pitch for your team. But <laughs> if I have three balls and I know this one's coming at me, I'm probably going to dodge and just trot to first base. Yeah, so that's a safe way to do it. That is a safe way because there are lots of times where if you get hit in the right spot, you know, it stings, but it doesn't do any damage. But I've had a teammate who broke her arm by getting hit by a pitch. Mm. And I have a teammate who just recently broke her hand by getting hit by a pitch in softball. So I've yeah. seen the... The at-bats where, yes, the hit-by-pitch does hurt you more than you'd actually like. So, good dodge there. I think there's a pitching change for the Fulton Cubs as number nine, Adam, will take third base. And they'll have a couple outfield changes. Maybe toss some catch around to warm somebody up. But we will see here. I think that they have a shift out in center field. I have not seen one center field this game play directly behind second base. So I wonder if the next pitcher coming up maybe throws a little bit slower than the pitcher who was previously throwing. Therefore, the batters will have the tendency to pull the ball. But the reliever, number two for the Fulton Cubs, Sam, comes in to warm up and take the place of Adam, who started the game pitching. So Sam will warm up as number 10 for the Rochester Cubs. Gabe Kerr is up to bat. We will take a quick break as Sam warms up, and we'll be back after this. Welcome back to Youth League Baseball as we had a quick pitching change for the Fulton Cubs. Number two, Sam comes into pitch as the previous pitcher, Adam, heads to third base. And Sam will inherit a couple of runners on first and second here. Yes, as a relief pitcher, that's probably my least favorite. Oh yeah, it's not fun to just and come in with batters. You could at least give me, you know, a clear base path and a good count, but... Looks like Sam throws pretty hard, doing pretty well his first batter here, which is number 10, Gabe Kerr, for the Rochester Cubs. So sometimes just the mix-up of pitching and the way that the delivery looks can mess up a batter. So before the inning got too far out of hand, it's still tied 6-6. Six to six. I think the Fulton Cubs team decided that a switch was in order. And that's a good pitch there, but... 
for strike three. And that's one out for the Rochester Cubs as this brings number four, Calvin Corbell, up to bat. But think about it, it's only the bottom of the second inning, but Sam, the previous pitcher with the Fulton Cubs, pitched through an entire lineup for the Rochester Cubs lineup. So a lot of times you'd like to get a starting pitcher to get through the lineup once, and then you mix in your relief pitching. So although it's only the second inning, he has pitched quite a few batters. Mm -hmm. I could see this, this wind up in release throwing off some of these Rochester hitters. His, his so release too. is really quick up there at the top. He seems to snap the ball off up mm -hmm. high, giving it a little more velocity and definitely a little different look for the batter since they already have had one, maybe two at-bats off of the previous pitcher for Fulton. So this is over <coughs> halfway down the lineup for the Rochester Cubs as they are up to bat with Calvin Corbell in the batter's box. Two runners on base. And this loads the bases up as Sam, number two for the Fulton Cubs, the pitcher, loads up the bases, bringing up number 11, Peyton McTaggart. He was hit his previous at bat, and he actually got a run walked in. So I wonder if he's thinking that this could happen again. Probably not <laughs> well, wanting that to happen. You know, but getting hit, I always think that. It's always in the back of my head. Oh, yeah. If you get hit on your previous at bat it's in the back of your head you just got to overcome it and see what you can do with that at bat absolutely and sometimes it's when you're least expecting it and other times you're always diving out of the way yeah. so we have zero outs here in the inning actually there's one out excuse me on this pass ball they will try and make it home and just slide under the tag so that will give another run to the rochester cubs as they are now up by one seven two six Good game played by both teams here tonight. Absolutely. I want to see a play at home. I want to see close tag play. There have been a couple plays, but they've been obviously safe. I mm -hmm. want to see. That's a heartbreaker to get a, an out at home when you're so close, so that would be exciting. So Sam coming in as the relief pitcher for the Fulton Cubs, and number 11, Peyton McTaggart up to the plate. Base is not loaded, but two runners in scoring position for the Rochester Cubs. But with that walk of Peyton McTaggart, that will load the bases back up, bringing up number two, Bryce Calvert, to the plate for the Rochester Cubs. And there is one out, one strikeout for this inning. And good pitch right down the middle of the plate for Sam. He wants to get started off ahead in the count early. As a pitcher, when you're ahead in the count, you have all the power, and that's exactly where you want to be. Yep, and it's, I don't know if anyone noticed, uh, but I can see it on, on the screen here. This batter is crouching very low, thinking he's trying to fish for some balls here, but uh, it's a good job by the Fulton pitcher here throwing strikes. Yep, there are some times where you have some shorter batters, or like you said, batters with a crouch stance, and those that makes it a little harder to pitch to as the umpire adjusts his strike zone according mm -hmm. to the batter. <coughs> so just on the corner, Sam is not missing by much. He's been throwing actually very good pitches, but also credit to the Rochester team. They aren't swinging at everything. So good job and good competition here by both teams. But that will walk in a run for the Rochester Cubs as they now have eight runs to Fulton Cubs, six runs. Bringing up the last batter for the Rochester Cubs lineup, Austin Rogers. And Austin watches the first pitch go by. As his bases are loaded here on this at bat. And pass, pass ball, ball and goes home like and man, I must be a fortune teller. <laughs> the out does happen at home on the pass ball. So unfortunate for the Rochester Cubs, but that is two outs for the inning, but that does advance the runners from two second and third, although the run did not score at home. It doesn't hurt them as bad as what many would think because now they don't have a, the Fulton Cubs don't have a force out at any bag. Right. And they still have two runners in scoring position. So they still have basically the same opportunity other than the extra out that they got. They're one big hit away from scoring two runs. Unfortunately, it didn't happen soon enough as Sam 
Strikes out the final batter there for the Rochester Cubs head back to the dugout to grab their gloves. Fulton Cubs head in to grab their helmets and we will head to the top of the third inning. The score is eight to six, Rochester Cubs in the lead. Welcome back to Youth League Baseball. This is Fulton Cubs versus Rochester Cubs in the top of the third inning. And the, st the score is six to eight. Eight being Rochester Cubs in the lead. Up to bat for the Fulton Cubs is number four, Gavin, with a pitching change for the Rochester Cubs. Number three, Lennon Craigbaum, has come to relief on the mound. And he is the second pitcher for the Rochester Cubs? That is correct. So swing and a miss is strike three for Gavin, bringing up Jameen for the Fulton Cubs here as he rounds out the bottom of their lineup. This will be the end of the second round through the lineup for the Fulton Cubs. And pitching change, like we said before, for the Rochester Cubs, mimicking the Fulton Cubs pitching change the inning before knowing that although only it's the third inning, many pitches have been thrown mm -hmm. by both pitchers. So we've seen back and forth rallies in the first few innings here, and wondering if the Fulton Cubs will continue that streak and get a couple runs in this inning as Rochester did at the bottom of the second inning. Yep, and this new Rochester pitcher seems to be doing a pretty good job here in the top of the third throwing strikes and I don't think these hitters are going to be adjusted immediately to this new pitcher. Never a fun thing as a batter when you're all zoned into one pitcher oh, yeah. and you get the on deck circle and see that yep. you've got to study on a new pitcher. It's one of the worst things that happens as a hitter, you know. I've, I've been in situations, and I'm sure you have as well, where you're dialed into a pitcher excited at, for your next at bat, and then you see a relief on the mound, and it just changes your whole game plan when you go up to the plate. Yep, absolutely. And that's Jameen taking four balls to head to first base, bringing up the relief pitcher. For the Fulton Cubs, number two, Sam, up to bat. In his last at bat, he had a big hit to score a few runs. Beautiful weather out here today, right, Abby? Very beautiful weather. It's been pretty hot all week. Yes, actually the cold front came in, or I would say at least the, a nice front came in yeah. last night as it was very, very hot yesterday. And a quick update, that was number two, Sam, hitting the ball back to the pitcher for the second out of the inning, but bringing Jameen to second base. So now up to bat is number 14, Brock for the Fulton Cubs as he hits a pop fly that is caught. A diving catch by the first baseman and that will end the inning for the Fulton Cubs. They will head to the dugout to grab their gloves to play some defense. Not scoring in that inning. First time of the game. It is the bottom of the third inning. The score is 8-6. Rochester Cubs in the lead. Welcome back to Youth League Baseball. We are in the bottom of the third inning as a line drive ground ball gets hit to the right field and this could be dangerous if the right fielder does not get it in time. It could be an in the park home run as the batter rounds his way to home, slides in for an in the park home run. So that was Number three, Lennon Craigbaum for the Rochester Cubs. So wow. very quickly. That was quick. That happened very quick. That was only, was that the first pitch or maybe that the was, second pitch? Yeah. 
first uh, or second pitch of the inning that was one of those seeing eye ground balls that just goes through the infield and when you hit that right field corner sometimes that's no man's land and in the park home runs happen so up to bat now for the rochester cubs is jake freeman number seven and still in relief on the mound for the fulton cubs is number two sam So now the score is nine to six. Rochester Cubs in the lead. And good swing there on a bouncing ball that goes foul, but still got some good bat on that as Freeman makes his way back to the batter's box. Yep, that's a good sign for Freeman. Um, as soon as you make contact, that can bring a little bit of confidence on that next pitch that you can get a more solid connection on that ball. Absolutely. So no runners on base as a previous in the Parker was just hit by Lennon Craigbaum, but Jake Freeman hopes to rally up this inning again and extend his lead as his team, the Rochester Cubs, is up by three. And pop fly just barely missed by the first baseman. There's been about two or three plays there for the first baseman on both teams that have either made diving catches or made diving plays that just rolled out of their gloves. So a lot of action over there on the right side today. And good attempts there too. So Freeman battling a two strike count here as he's hit a couple foul balls, but just missed them when he makes contact better run hard because it's going to go far. And ground ball to the second baseman just missed by the pitcher. But good pickup by the second baseman there as he had to watch out for the pitcher. Still grab the ball and gets the out. So first out of the inning for the Rochester Cubs bringing up the number three batter William Erback for the Rochester Cubs. William was the starter for the Rochester Cubs, is that correct? He was the starting pitcher. And Craig Baum is now the current pitcher coming in relief of Herbeck. And foul ball right back at our faces. I don't know if you flinched, but I did. <laughs> yeah, that was right in your face, huh? Better that it's a fence. Sometimes you go to these games and they've got those swing away nets and I've seen too <laughs> many people stick their face real close to the fence and yeah and there's some there's some uh, give in the net <laughs> yes it does not end up pretty I've seen a couple black eyes and Ouch. not fun stuff it's funny later when you realize how silly it was to stick <laughs> your face close to the net but not funny at the time so we're protected more here this is William Erback up to bat for the Rochester Cubs taking big swings as number two Sam the pitcher for the Fulton Cubs is working his way through the game. We are about an hour and 15 minutes into the game and only the third inning. So as you can see by the score, lots of runs happening here. And high fly ball to left field will drop right in front of the left fielder as he stumbles. Erback will take second base and the throw past Ooh. second base brings him to third base. He tries for an in the parker, but good throw back to the pitcher. That's always a safe yeah, way to go. That's, that's what you need to do when things get out of control. When, just get that ball back to that pitcher. When things get crazy, give it to the guy in the circle and Erback will get a triple with errors, bringing number five and the cleanup batter, Aaron Kennedy, to the plate. And there's another pass ball there. Quick reaction by the Fulton Cubs catcher to get that back to his pitcher before Urbach able, is able to score. But after running a triple, I probably would stay at third base myself. Yeah, just did a lot of running there. <laughs> yep, I would say so. It doesn't look as far when, when you're sitting in the stands, but after you sprint quite a few bases, it yep. takes the wind out of you. And bunt attempt for a pass ball. Sam, the pitcher, not able to get to cover home in time. Urbach scores That'll from third base. 10 to six. 
It is 10 to 6 in the bottom of the third inning. So the limit is six innings. We're about halfway there, but probably going to reach the time limit before that happens. So good bunt attempt just misses under the bat. And we have one out for the inning. So Aaron Kennedy up to bat still after a pass ball scores his teammate. And he ducks out of the way of that pitch to take first base on a walk. So number 10, Gabe Kerr, is up to bat for the Rochester Cubs. Pitch low and out, good pickup by the Fulton Cubs catcher. Good pitch, but good eye by the batter as that was a ball. Sitting up in the press box, I probably would have swung at that myself. Yeah, those are hard pitches to lay off as a hitter. Mm -hmm. And that's the first strike on the batter. Counts two and one. Score is 10 to six. Rochester Cubs in the lead and also up to bat. Only one out of the inning. Sam, number two, is the pitcher for the Fulton Cubs. And that's his second strike on the batter. Quickly working his way in control of this at bat. Some good chatter by. Haven't Fort heard Cubs. much this game. Yeah, it's been a quiet game, but it's nice to hear a little bit of chatter. It was. Small. Means they're into the game, and maybe that chatter helped as the strikeout brings number four, Calvin Corbell, up to bat. Rochester Cubs now have two outs. Last time we were at the minor league game, we heard the chicken waffle chant. I haven't heard that <laughs> one this game. This one's strikeout. So maybe when, maybe when you get to the minor leagues, it's a little more advanced in your <laughs> chanting. And good hit by the Calvin Corbell. First baseman Ooh. bobbles it. That's a tough play Ooh. as the runner on first base is running. So he gets in the way visually of the first baseman and that messes up. Once you lose the ball sometimes in your line of sight, it's hard to get it back. So he's probably a little frustrated that he lost control of the ball, but either way, there's two outs. And this brings number 11, Peyton McTaggart up to bat. Rochester Cubs have two runners on base. Tough job for the first baseman today. There's been quite a few bloop hits and plays that they've had to dive for. So big swing by McTaggart, hoping to score his teammate who is in scoring position in second base. And like we've seen quite a few triples tonight, if he places it correctly, he could score his teammate from first. Mm -hmm. So that was a delayed steal there and actually a delayed double steal, but mm. good job by Sam to keep his composure and not throw the ball around. Knowing that he has two outs, he needs to focus on McTaggart and get this out to get out of the inning. Yeah, very smart play by the pitcher. And knowing that he could throw a good pitch and get the out at first base, that will end the inning for the bottom of the third. We will head to the top of the fourth. The score is 10 to six, Rochester Cubs in the lead. Welcome back to Youth League Baseball, Rochester Cubs versus Fulton Cubs. This is Rochester Cubs in the field, Fulton Cubs up to bat. Speaking of, number three, Caden, for the Fulton Cubs, is up to bat. The score is eight, excuse me, ten to six. Rochester Cubs in the lead, with this being the top of the fourth inning. And a good eye there by Fulton, watching that pitch go across his chest. Those are hard to lay off. Yes, I've seen... It was a called strike, but we've seen a lot of good patience by both teams' batters today as not swinging at any crazy pitches and making the pitchers pitch to them. So Caden up to bat and Craig Baum for the Rochester Cubs on the mound. 
So number three batter for the Fulton Cubs with number four batter, Adam, who has had two triples in his two at-bats this game. So he is definitely on a roll for the Fulton Cubs. And good eye there by Caden being patient. Knowing that the score is 10 to six, he can't hit a four run home run by himself. So just getting on base is the first step to getting his team back in the game. Yep. <coughs> And that was a called strike. That's what I thought. I was a little confused. I so think he may have been a little confused by that call. Maybe trying to run it out knowing that it was a low pitch, but that is one out for the inning. And bringing number nine, Adam, to the plate. He was a starting pitcher, and like we said, tearing it up at the plate, having two triples already. Mm. You can certainly expect to see something out of him. And you can see the couple of the outfielders playing decently deep, which is a smart play by them. And I wouldn't want to be having a, a fly ball hit to me if I was in left field right now. You can see that sun going straight into his eyes. Yes. Needing some sunglasses, maybe pulling the brim of the hat down because that is never a fun angle when you're fighting the sun. I have seen a few teammates get a ball that bounces off their forehead or mm. their cheek, which not a good feeling. No. And good duck out of the way by Adam, knowing that he wants to hit the ball. He could take a pitch and get on base, but if I had three triples, I'd probably want to hit as well. Oh, yeah, you can tell he's just hungry for a hit. He's watching the ball <coughs> go all the way to the catcher's mitt. Mm -hmm. Counts even at two. Top of the fourth inning here, Rochester Cubs up by four. And that brings the count to full. Good job by Craig Baum, the pitcher working the count, but also number nine, Adam the batter, being patient. And close ball to take for strike or excuse me, for ball four, but could have easily been strike three. Yep, you could see the, the way the umpire called that. He, he clearly gave that, uh, that motion that it could have gone either way, yes. but he decided to give the Fulton batter here the walk. And up to bat now is number 23, Crew. Sometimes that's scary as the batter when you look up and the umpire has his arm in the air. You can't yeah. tell if he's pointing to first or if he's about to ring you up. Yep. So on the pass ball, Adam will head to second base. There's only one out, and Crew now has an opportunity to get an RBI with his teammate in scoring position. Very quick base running by Adam there. He got to second very fast. And Chopper to the pitcher. Gets the out at first base, but Crew does move his teammate to third base. So good sacrifice on moving the batter, but now there are two outs. All the pressure is on number eight, the batter EJ for the Fulton Cubs to not leave his teammate Adam stranded for the inning on third base. This is where chipping away at a lead comes, comes into play. These are the kind of plays that you look at at the end of the game and say, hey, that, that was an opportunity where we could have scored. So this is an important situation here for the Fulton Cubs to see if they can get another run on the board. And good swing by EJ, just a low and away pitch. Just went under his back. And Adams over there on third base, taunting this Rochester pitcher, really yes. wanting him to throw it over there. Those are fun times playing with uh, kids you know. Exactly, hoping to throw the ball away, but that doesn't happen as Craig Baum strikes out for strikes out the batter for the third out of the inning. 
The score is 10 to 6, Rochester Cubs in the lead as we head to the bottom of the fourth. Welcome back to Youth League Baseball on RTC TV. This is Fulton Cubs versus the Rochester Cubs in the bottom of the fourth inning. Number four, Gavin, excuse me, number two, Sam, is up to bat for the Rochester Cubs as he ducks out of the way of a wild pitch by number two. Excuse me, this is Bryce Calvert up to bat for the Rochester Cubs. Sam is on the mound for the Fulton Cubs. Score is 10 to six, Rochester Cubs in the lead. So Bryce Calvert takes ball four, bringing up Austin Rogers to the plate for the Rochester Cubs. We are nearing that uh, hour 45 minute time limit as we watch the bottom of the fourth inning here. So if this inning does last any longer than 15 minutes, we may potentially see the end of the game. And that was a great steal, not even on a pass ball by Bryce Calvert. Good throw by Jaden, the Fulton Cubs catcher. But now Bryce Calvert, only one pitch into the second batter is already on second base. But you are correct. If this inning lasts 14 more minutes before ending, the game will be over. You cannot start another inning after the hour 45 time limit. So we will see if the Fulton Cubs get another chance to bat or if the Rochester Cubs will string out this at bat. So Bryce Calvert for the Rochester Cubs on second base. Austin Rogers up to bat facing number two, Sam, the pitcher for the Fulton Cubs. For those of you at home just tuning in, both Cubs teams do have the same uniforms on. It might get a tad confusing as the Rochester Cubs, Bryce Calvert steals third base and just slides under that tag. Really good slide. Ends up at third base. Now Austin Rogers has an opportunity to just make contact with the ball to get an RBI. That's good heads up base running there by by Rochester. And Austin Rogers will take ball four and head to first base, and that ball flew so hard off the backstop it actually rolled down the third baseline. So <laughs> Bryce Calvert decided to stay, bringing up the leadoff batter and relief pitcher for the Rochester Cubs, Lennon Craigbaum. And a pass ball will send yep. Rogers yep. to second base and have Calvert sliding into home to make the score 11 to six. So very, very quick start here for Rochester on the bats, already getting a run in with zero outs. Yes, zero outs, a runner in scoring position and lead off batter top of the lineup coming up. And good swing, but just foul on a high pitch. So Fulton Cubs versus Rochester Cubs. And that was a strike on number three, Lennon Craigbaum for the Rochester Cubs who are up now by five runs, 11 to six. And good swing, but a strikeout for Craig Baum, getting aggressive with a runner in scoring position. But that will be the first out of the inning, bringing up number seven, Jake Freeman for the Rochester Cubs. And that's a, can't stress the importance of that strikeout there by Fulton Cubs pitcher on the leadoff hitter for the Rochester Cubs with a runner in scoring position. That's a great strikeout to have. Big out, big confidence booster for the Fulton Cubs, knowing that if they get two more quick outs, they have another chance at an at-bat here before the game is over. Mm -hmm. And great swing, just a little bit late, but good hands, good contact by Freeman there, as now he battles a two-strike count. Both catchers for the both teams have been 
very good with their sportsmanship and handing off bats when there's been a foul ball. Not only is it good sportsmanship, but it also speeds the game up a little bit. Yep. And good contact. It'll fall just foul, but Freeman is all over these pitches, especially going on the right side for an outside pitch. So see how he battles here, but he does have a runner in scoring position. Chance at an RBI. Yep, that can make you pretty uneasy as a pitcher as he does a great job of striking out free in there. That and can make you uneasy. Uh -oh. Looks like Rochester Cubs will score here. That was, yes, a big strikeout for strike or for out number two. I think the Fulton Cubs catcher, Jaden, got a little excited for getting which, very easy to forget when the uniforms are so similar tonight, that he had a runner on second base, overthrew it to third base, allowing the runner on second base to come around and score. So that's an error that the Fulton Cubs coach probably not be too happy with. But, like I said, I've made the mistake quite a few times on which team is up to bat because the uniforms are identical. Yeah, I got to forgive him on that one with these uniforms being so identical. He could have easily mistaken that third baseman for a runner. I think so as well. So <coughs> this is number nine, William Urbach, the number three batter for the Rochester Cubs up to bat. His team does have two outs with no runners on base. So scoring out 12 to six in Rochester's favor here with two outs and no runners on. And Urbach will take the walk to first base. Looks like he's gonna send him to second. And a couple misplayed balls there by the infielders. He slides in for second base. William Urbach, the starting pitcher, but also very athletic and taking oh, yeah. quite a few extra bases here in his at-bats. Wanting to get to second base for his number four cleanup hitter, Aaron Kennedy. Great idea by both player and coach there mm -hmm. on stealing second base. And big hacking swing by Aaron Kennedy just under the pitch here, knowing he's got an RBI to extend his lead and even hoping to stretch this inning out as we've got a little more than 10 minutes left before the time limit runs out. So Kennedy up to bat, Urbach on second base. Two outs in the inning. Looking for a two out rally, but number two, the pitcher for Fulton Cubs, Sam, hoping here to get this final out. And it looks like an umpire timeout for a shoe tie, I'm assuming. Yes, you have got to keep those shoelaces tied. In all seriousness, and it would be bad if you tripped over your shoes. Oh yeah. Can't say I've done that in any sporting event, but... Uh, now you're probably going to do it walking down the street because <laughs> yeah. you just jinxed yeah, yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it Tend happens. Tend to do that. Sometimes those stairs can get tricky. <laughs> and good eye here by Aaron Kennedy, taking his time, getting some good pitches, knowing that a big run is on second base. They are up by six runs, them being the Rochester Cubs here. Bottom of the fourth inning. And that will be ball number four for Kennedy, bringing up number 10, Gabe Kerr. Still with Urbach on second base, Kennedy on first base, Kerr up to bat, two outs, 12 to six, Rochester Cubs ahead of Fulton Cubs. And the Fulton Cubs now have a force out of any bag here, so it frees up some more defensive plays and defensive options. If Something is hit to them. And good swing by Kerr. Just misses on the inside pitch. And unfortunately, <laughs> the ball hits his bat as he ducks out of the way of a wild pitch. So as unfortunate as that is, it is a foul ball on Kerr. Yeah, I've had that happen to me a couple times throughout my career. Very upsetting. But I will say that it's better than uh, 
having the ball hit you in the hands because that also does count as a foul ball. But and it hurts. You also have to take the pain of that ball hitting you in the hands. But it hurts a lot more. Yes, right. I would. I would agree. So, defense chanting for a strikeout. Not quite yet as the Rochester Cubs advance on a pass ball. Gabe Kerr up to bat for the Rochester Cubs. Two outs in the inning. Looking to extend their lead. He's got a two and two count. And pass ball, but nice grab by number seven, Jaden. Miss throw oh. to home plate. Or excuse mm. me, miss throw to the pitcher. Allows the Rochester Cub player to cross home plate to make the score 13 to six. You know, I noticed something that this batter learned very quickly. Um, the previous pitch, he fouled it off because he held that bat in the air. Mm -hmm. And then the pitch right after that, you saw him bring that bat down. It just takes one time for these kids to learn something. That's true. A very good adjustment. You love to see that, how they're competing and making adjustments throughout the game. So as Kerr walks, now he steals to second base as Calvin Corbell is up to bat. A double steal there by the Rochester Cubs, kind of on a two-out rally here. And only four minutes left in this time limit. So if the Rochester Cubs can keep this inning going, the game will be over. If the Fulton Cubs can get the out in less than four minutes, they have another chance to bat. I'll also say that the current batter right now, if the two runners currently on, as well as him, end up scoring, then that would be the end of the game due to a run roll. So. There are a couple possibilities of Rochester ending this game here in this this inning. And speaking of Rochester scoring runs on a pass ball there, the Rochester Cubs player did cross home plate, so it is 14 to 6. And line shot to right field past the right fielder. Brings in one run. Now a second run. Having Corbell end up with a triple on wow. third base. So Absolutely. that is the run rule, potentially. I believe so. We're waiting to see a call by the umpires. They may it finish. Looks like they may just finish the inning. They now. may finish out the inning, but the score is 16 to 6. And this brings number 11. Peyton McTaggart up to the plate. They are having a small discussion about the runs. I think they are uh, determining whether or not to end the game or to decide to just let them finish up with the inning. It would only need to be one more out, but I think they're gonna leave this one up to the coaches. So a 16 to six score, finishing the game here. A number 11, Peyton McTaggart for the Rochester Cubs up to bat. One runner on third base here and two outs for the inning. Just one or two minutes left here. If the Rochester Cubs can hold on to their at bat, they will not allow the Fulton Cubs to bat again for the game will be over as the time limit has been complete. So a lot of times in this situation, especially the score being such a difference, sometimes the team that's in the lead will stall a little bit to make sure that the game does not need to go another inning. Mm -hmm. So good swing by McTaggart. Runner on third base still for an RBI opportunity for the Rochester Cubs. Sam, number two for the Fulton Cubs, still on the plate. And McTaggart hit mm. for the second time of the game. If you remember <laughs> correctly, he was hit in the back earlier in the game, and this seemed to have hit him in the elbow, maybe the forearm. But this time, instead of walking back to the dugout, he shook it off quickly and headed to first base. So now up to bat is number two, Bryce Calvert. And if I remember correctly, he did start off this inning for the Rochester Cubs. 
before they went on their two out rally if you remember correctly they have had two outs for quite some time so they've been on a two out rally here mm. and score is 16 to 6 in the lead rochester cubs but still battling on the mound is number two sam for the fulton cubs who starts off with a strike no i can't ever say that i took two for the team in one game yeah that is quite a coincidence or maybe just a ball magnet you know you have some of those teammates who seem to always get hit by the ball yeah. no matter what they do so yeah. great job by Peyton to be tough and like you said take one for the team and bring up another batter to the plate which is number two Bryce Calvert and there will be strike three for that third out Strike three. We will wait and see as this is touchy as far as time limit goes because we are within one or two minutes around the time limit. So hold on tight here as the score is 16 to six. I'm watching the umpires give some signals to each other looking like they're about to call the game for the time limit as they check their phones. So. That will be the game. The final score between the Fulton Cubs and the Rochester Cubs in the fourth inning is 16-6. to six. Rochester Cubs coming out on top. Great night for baseball. Great game that we saw. Good battle by both teams. This has been Youth League Baseball on RTC-TV. Thanks for watching.